It's Hearthstone Grandmasters for the European region. Our match of the day is about to get underway. It's Silver Name versus Tice. And that's admirable. And I'm joined by Derek Brown. And Derek, this is a heck of a match that we have coming up. It really is. Two of the absolute biggest names in Hearthstone streaming. And also, I would say, Hearthstone competing. I think for, uh, I can't remember exactly when I checked the stat, but Silver Name was the highest prize money earning in uh, player in Russia after Pavel, I believe, obviously, with his world championship victory. And Tice as well. Who doesn't know Tice at this point? One of the best European competitors of all time, or worldwide competitors of all time, and obviously pretty much the biggest Hearthstone streamer at the moment. And we get to see him play here in Grandmasters, which is always a treat. And so if you're just joining us for Grandmasters, here's an overview of exactly how it works. It is 48 of the elite of the elite that we've gathered here. The Americas region, the European region, which we're watching right now, and Asia Pacific, which took place earlier today. And over the course of eight weeks, they are battling in a double round robin stage that are split into two divisions as they fight it out every single week, being able to submit new decks as they move towards that playoff spot where the regions will cross over and compete. And here, we're not using last year's standing, we're not using Conquest, we're using Specialist. That's right, our brand new format for Grand Masters and all for, for all the Open Cups that are going on as well at the moment, if you want to try Specialist yourself. Uh, in Specialist, you bring one class and three decks of that class. In each of your three decks, they have to share 25 of the same cards, but you can spice them up a little bit with five cards different between all of those decks to try and uh, counter whatever strategies your opponent may be bringing. As we're seeing here in Grand Masters, it's generally you take your primary, secondary, and tertiary decks each for a specific deck of your opponent. We're seeing a lot of players put in the big greedy minions versus warrior, a lot of healing and removal versus the aggro decks. Uh, generally makes a good amount of sense as it's not just five cards I think are good. Specific targeted strategies definitely appears to be the meta at the moment. Indeed it is. And Tice versus Silver name here. You know these two players, but we sat down with them in some interviews so we can get a few more words and some insight into the two of these. My name is Vladislav. I'm not going to Silver name and my country is on Twitch Silver name. The fact, probably, that I'm very dependent on the game. And so, everyone knows it, but они просто, наверное, не подозревают, на каком, в каких масштабах вообще это, насколько это серьезно. Уже даже независимость — это жизнь виртуальная. Уникальный стиль игры. Наверное, какие-то контроль колоды. Самая моя любимая контроль колода — контроль воин. Об этом все знают. Наверное, самая сильная черта, черта, черта игры в контроле. Быть грандмастером для меня, наверное, показывать хорошую игру. Ну, наверное, самое, чего не хотелось бы, это, скорее всего, ну, вылететь из этой лиги, потому что это самое обидное будет. Для того, чтобы это случилось, это должно ну, крайне не повезти. Если говорить по факту, европейский регион — это самый сильный регион. И, как я уже говорил ранее, получить э, хороший игровой опыт с э, игрой с самыми сильными игроками — это самый главный плюс, наверное, на будущее. Тайс — это самый, наверное, популярный европейский стример. На Стар Ладре, по-моему, последнее мы не пересекались, но хотелось бы с ним тоже сыграть, потому что в Ладре мы очень часто с ним попадались. Счет примерно у нас равный. My name is Tice, also known as G2 Tice on Twitter and Tice on Twitch. My favorite is for memory, also my status is for memory. At the same time is the semifinals of BlizzCon 2015, uh, where I played against Oskaka. We played probably one of the best Hearthstone matches ever and I knew if I would win that match, I would become world champion, and I unfortunately lost it, but I'm starting to become a little proud of it as well. What makes me very unique is that I just really am very passionate about Hearthstone. I have a very preferred style of playing. It's definitely something that I want to be less predictable, but uh, it's always going to be a challenge for me. For me, Grandmaster means that you are like just very good at the game, and for me that's kind of satisfying as well to like, like just get that spot. I'm still a competitor, I'm a competitor in my heart, and that's what I want to show. In the competition in Europe, I always want actually the strongest group I can. It gives me extra motivation. I've always feel that the way I improve is when I play against very good players. I want to just prove over and over again that I'm still like one of the best players in the world. Getting to the top is difficult, but staying at the top is, in my opinion, even more difficult. I'm looking forward to face uh, Silver Name. I have a lot of people always uh, from uh, his stream also joining my stream when we face each other and trolling around, but uh, today he's not gonna win. We've seen about him, we've heard about him. 
Now it's time to take a look at what they're actually doing. Their deck lists, Tice versus Silvername. Tice is going to be on uh, the Cyclone Mage. His copied, uh, or put in two copies of Questing Adventure, excuse me. Uh, Silvername, though, with a pretty interesting choice this week where he narrowly fell to Bunny Hopper um, in his first series this week with the Mech Hunter, the aggressive Mech Hunter deck. Yeah, very much a bold bring to Grandmasters after last week. I believe PNC in the Americas region was the only player to bring Mech Hunter and went 0-2 with it. He it, did bring a big version of it, though. That's true. Oh, was that teched in in his secondary or tertiary deck? Either way, the core of the deck, as you can see here, a whole bunch of mechs, a whole bunch of magnetic effects, and also a kind of secondary benefit of a lot of death rattles that you can combo together to work beautifully with the firework tech. Make no mistake, generally speaking, this deck wants to play as an aggro deck. Kill your opponent as quick as possible by curving out and using the magnetic effect in particular to make sure the minions you play can effectively attack face immediately by attaching them onto existing mechs. Yeah, a lot of Blessing of Kings-like effects. Pretty much. They can't be Blessing of Kings, they're minions as well. And this is what he's fighting off against here. Uh, and I think that Tice might have his, his work cut out for him uh, in this matchup. You know, Questing Adventurer, I think, is a heck of a card. But when I look at Silvername's deck, I'm not sure the Questing Adventure really stacks up against this because against Mech Hunter, you so often want to be containing their board until that one moment where their power pushes are just not strong enough. Yeah, uh, I think Questing Adventure is a very interesting point in this matchup because generally against aggro decks, it's a lot better than you would expect because if it's just one minion that they can't answer for a turn, you can just win the game off the back of that one minion straight away because generally Zoo, Murloc Shaman, they don't run much hard removal. Mech Hunter, on the other hand, does have obviously uh, the Venomizer and the Spider Bombs thrown in there as well. So there is a reasonable amount of hard removal thrown into the deck. And so here we go. Our match of the day is getting underway. Uh, you saw there on the deck summary from Tice. I'm looking at that secondary deck where he adds in the two Rattle Bouncers, a oh, Zilliax, yeah. a Frostbolt, and a Shooting Star to come up big in this one where he substitutes out a Stargazer Luna, two Questing Adventures, and two Snap Freezes. He has to go with his initial deck here in game number one, but in games two and potentially game number three, I imagine those extra defensive cards could be a major help to him winning a game. I would very much imagine that you are correct, uh, which is interesting in the way that players are teching their primary decks, given that you have to play that one first in each game of Specialist. Tyst, I would say, very much has teched his deck for the Mirror with double Snap Freeze thrown in there again to deal with those early mountain giants. And the questings. Yes, I think that could be very, very powerful as well. In, in the mirror. Game. This is not a mirror, however. Yeah. This it, <laughs> honestly, this is something I've struggled with a lot with uh, the mech, the aggressive mech hunter decks is exactly how to mulligan. Um, you know, you definitely want mecharu. I think fireworks tech uh, makes just, you know, an abundant amount of sense in this deck. The bomb toss to me is an interesting keep where he's fighting off against actively two of the more right. proactive things that uh, Tice can do. And Silvername has been consistently keeping the bomb toss as well against Bunny Hopper yesterday, which was a somewhat different matchup, of course, against the beast mid-range hunter for Silvername rather than the Cyclone Mage that he's up against now. In both of those decks, though, you have two drop minions that you really want to kill instantly in obviously the Scavenging Hyena for the Beast Hunter and the Sorcerer's Apprentice for the Mage. Wow. I was also just about to say that if Tice can pick up Mana Cyclone, this is insane Ooh. look at that when do, you, when do you do it i mean you can just keep waiting here but stuff on board is stuff stuff is stuff i like stuff i will not disagree with that by going for the ping here he does stop the fireworks tech being able to generate another one one off of it which is obviously worth considering but we could obviously have just seen a full exploding onto the board there with all of those cards on turn one. So that, turn two. that's a good early question for me. I mean, it's rare that you can just play all five cards in your hand. Right. <laughs> um, when you can do that, it, it's often good. Right. Especially as it would be, uh, the Sorcerer's Apprentice would be hidden behind a, uh, a mirror image, therefore making it a lot more difficult to be magnetized onto with either a Venomizer or a Spider Bomb to kill it off. And how does Silvername read into that as well? to hero power is so natural on this turn. Coin Spider Bomb is super tempting though because on the following turn yeah, he has fireworks tech on both of on these magnetized minions. Silverflame kind of shakes his head at this play though, but I think this is easily his strongest option. It's the strongest immediately. The downside is of course the fact that he uh, doesn't have a particularly strong turn three follow-up. So now Tice with Conjurer's Calling can look at 
turn four, I think, for the aim, where you go Sorcerer's Apprentice, you Mirror Image, you Elemental Evocation, you Double Ray of Frost, you Mana Cyclone, you Conjurer's Calling the two. You just get stuff mm, on board to fight insane. back. I like it. I mean, this is a strange series of outcomes. Conjurer's Calling is going to service good at a lot of points in this game. And since you're going to have taunts out, it does make a lot of sense to me to just simply build a board and, you know, buy extra mana for next turn. Mm -hmm. I think it's very likely you would you want to start casting more spells next turn, start putting more business in play. And I wonder if there's how likely Tice thinks it is that next turn his apprentice will survive and he'll be able to go double Conjurer's Calling on the Mana Cyclone. That as well. Definitely worth considering. As Silvername, I imagine, is wondering the same thing we are here. Why not last turn? I know exactly why last turn. He wanted to damage a 3 3 instead of damage a 1 1. Fair enough. Woo! Polymorph, Polymorph is big. Polymorph, Polymorph is great against this deck. He is very big. Oh. For Tice, I imagine you are very interested in taking care of Goblin Bombs early to avoid magnetic. Yes, yeah, so purposes. We could, what can we see here? Trade the Goblin Bomb. And then we could just then see Ping Sorcerer's Apprentice, which completely clears the board and only has a one in three chance of hitting a good minion. Ooh. I'll be yeah, just I love wow. just second, get stuff on board. And second bomb toss is so good. It's pretty good, but all of Silvername's plays are just slow and they're not really developing much proactively at all. I, I think that not that's not necessarily a downside for him, though. I mean, you look at how Tice played the opening hand. He threw away Mountain Giant, threw away Arcane Interlink. Yeah. Knows the matchup is going to be centrally focused around Mana Cyclone. If that's the case, what that means is Tice is just about out of gas in terms of fighting for board. He has four randomly generated spells and then a card from his deck in hand. Like, Silver Name knows he's just about out of stuff, so I think when you can kill minions... That is extremely powerful. I agree. Name. It's about as good as he can do Ooh. at the moment, but I'm not actually sure that it's good enough because if you give Mage enough time, even if their hand is all generated spells at the moment, eventually they're going to do something Job broken. Done. It's just what the deck does. That yep. is a super important pickup there for Silver Name. I think there is some merit here to Explode Nader, but there is a lot of merit to start killing stuff. Yep. I like just getting that magnetized. Next turn, Explode Nader Fireworks tech. That looks like a turn to me. And so for Tice, I think uh, he doesn't necessarily have to consider Polymorph in this instance because he has the Kona Cold. Mm -hmm. So the three 1-1s one -ones on the uh, Goblin Bomb that Death Rattle. And now a Shooting Star as well. The Book of Spectres too it's is true. really tempting with this hand. I really like the Book of Spectres because at this point, you're only so looking for minions. Like, you don't yeah. care about the spells right now. He doesn't have Rabble Bouncers in his primary deck, so leaving all these 1-1s one in play is mostly a downside, however. I wonder. But with the Conjurer's Calling already in hand, even in the Nightmare scenario that you discard the second one, that, that's still okay. You still have some way of developing pressure. Yeah, it's not the central focus of this matchup. It's the... It's more of a closing mechanism yeah. than it is uh, generally. Yeah. The primary play or a mid-game solidification. Yeah. It's much more about containing mm. board. Time runs out on me. I think I agree. Ooh. Ah. Who cares? Okay. Yeah. It's far from ideal, but two more spells generated. Sandbinder found. It gets himself another snap freeze anyway, and the two ice barriers that he has now picked up. Yeah. Those, those could, could be huge in this matchup. Because I don't think Silvername ever gets there by not attacking face for the rest of the game. Yeah, and I like Silvername starting to weave in the hero powers. Yeah. I think that the fact that Goblin Bombs require so much attention helps him leverage the hero power. Like, at this stage, Tice is going to have to figure out a way to throw caution to the win in regards to minions in play. You have two copies of Ice Barrier, so your life total is not as pertinent. And you have to figure out a way to take the board and eliminate Silvername. Cool. If this keeps going long, he's not going to get there. Yeah, and this is just starting to look yeah. so good. Guaranteed to get a Mountain Giant there for Tice, what with both of the Cyclones having Ooh! been played. And talk about mechs winning this game. Man, it's like, oh, the Hecklebot here coming to the rescue here of Tice. 
yep. Spider Bomb can go for a 50-50. Well, or I, hmm. you have a... Uh... You have some pretty darn good plays here in Silver Name Spot still with Direwolf Alpha, with Spider Bomb, with Fireworks Tech. I mean, a lot of things here are still keeping pressure on Tice. So we could see Spider Bomb magnetized onto the replicating menaced Goblin Bomb in order to summon three 1-1s, one -ones, destroy a random enemy minion, and deal two damage to Tice, and give the minion plus one, plus one when Fireworks Tech is played on it. And that's right alone, that's, uh, that's six attack. I yep. wonder. So with a Direwolf Alpha mixed into that, you get to use the other two Goblin Bombs and kill the Hecklebot in the instances sure. it does not die uh, to a Spider Bomb activation. Yeah. So if it does die to the Spider Bomb activation, Very massive crazy. damage. Yeah. He's not thinking oh, he must be block, you see? I, I guess maybe he wants to save the Spider Bomb to go for a Mountain Giant kill. Well, the other thing, too, is if you just make a bunch of Goblin Bombs, you have Direwolf Alpha in hand. Right, and also, Silvername knows there is a Mountain Giant in hand, and he also knows that there is a Conjurer's Calling in hand. 100%. Because he's seen both Mana Cyclones, he saw a card was drawn off of Sandbinder, and he's seen the first half of a Conjurer's Calling. Oh, boy. So he used the information that he'd gained from Tice's plays to figure out this Spider Bomb has to hit a better target than the Hecklebolt. Now, I'm not convinced that's the case. And really? the reason why is because I think Silvername needed to continue aggression here. I think the fact that he slowed down what for a setup do. gives Tice the window to, to get do. aggressive. He has a bunch of randomly generated spells and you know he has a mountain giant. Think about how likely a Frost Nova is. Yeah. But like, e everything is bad. Like if he goes with, I guess the, if he goes with the spider bomb here, and Mountain Giant into double Grave Horror comes down, that's just too much resistance. I guess the thing to consider really is that Tice only has one copy of Frost Nova naturally in the deck. And he's gonna fill up the board, so you cannot even Spider Bomb Magnetize. Genius. Yeah, I love this play. I think it's great hesitance to not even go for the Conjurer's Calling, because again, you just don't need it as Tice. Yo. Silvername could do literally nothing but hero power pass. He's just, he's gonna die. 16, 19, 22. I mean, it's not lethal right now, but it's, it's he has as to, close as it makes He has to difference. kill Tice on the next turn, yeah. or there's a Pyroblast there. He does indeed. He took this too slow. And there's an Ice Barrier as well. So was his best hope to go for the Spider Bomb Fireworks tech to kill off the Hecklebot? I think so. And then pray that Tice just rolls double Mountain Giant off of the Mountain Giant cut. Damage. Calling. Deal damage. Deal. Because you, you get to keep your Spider Bomb. Your Spider Bomb lives. This is the problem with playing too slow against Mage. Eventually, they will just kill you. Step one. Sure. Defend yourself. I mean, he's even got... He's even got the Ice Barrier as well. Is there ever enough damage off of these Goblin Bombs with the Direwolf Alpha? It's eight damage from Goblin Bombs in play. Okay. It'd be nine, ten with the Fireworks tech. Yeah, Hero Power is 12. No. If he gets a Kill Command off the top... That's not in the deck. Is he not playing... Oh, yeah, It's of a course. mech deck. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, the damage all comes from charge-like effects. Bomb Toss has already been played. Or both of which have already been played, sorry. He has to connect enough damage to face to overcome the fact that there's an eight damage heal off of the ice barrier. And honestly, I think Tice might be landing on like a Kona Cold or a Polymorph play yeah, in this instance to, to pretty easily get this done. Do. I'm a bit surprised he's Kona Colding the one ones Me over too. the three, two and two of the Goblin Bombs. I was definitely looking at uh, freezing the Goblin Bombs there. Well, either way, Tice just needs to not die. So there you go, figure that one out. I think if you don't kill the 3-2, there's less Goblin Bomb damage from a Direwolf Alpha. Yeah. And even with Leroy here, Direwolf Alpha, there's too many frozen minions on either side. He's isolated the two in the middle, so Direwolf Alpha can't even do that much. And even with Fireworks Tech and Leroy Jenkins, I'm just not seeing it. <laughs> what? What happened? It just all slips out of his he, hands. He took the turn against Hecklebot too slow. I think he needed to push full steam ahead. Yeah, I mean, that was right or wrong. That was the crucial turn. I think we can both agree that that was the big deviation from what we were expecting to see come down. And again, I think what it all comes down to very interestingly is 
huge amounts of information that Silvername had access to. Generally, you're working around how likely are they to have sea giant or mountain giant countries calling. Silvername knew 100% that both of those cards were in hand, and I think maybe he let that get into his head a little bit too much. Ah, can he heal out of this? So that and a spider bomb does not get there. So that heals up. Oh, yeah, not even close. It only heals for five. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I just Whether want to see Silvername's reaction here when the Pyroblast goes face. Ah. Appropriate. Very understated, I would say. Usually a much more emotive player. But there we go. Tice taking game one with his mage. I would say a mage that is very much not equipped to deal with this mech hunter. So taking that primary game with his anti-mage primary mage deck is a huge victory. Well, I don't disagree with you, but look at what happened on turn four. I mean, okay, it's still mage. It's still doing mage things. Oh, he played his, like, his whole hand. He did. That's not supposed to happen. Like... It's supposed to be difficult to play all your cards. Like, and you're not supposed to get just an extra reward for playing all your cards. You played all your cards. That's the reward. He just gets a bunch of spells afterwards, too. That's not fair. It's a pretty good deck. It's a I'll pretty good deck. One. Wow. Tice takes that game one. Again, I think Silvername just played that one a little too slow. I think he needed to play more into the strength of the deck. I can fully Full see steam ahead. Yeah. We'll find out if he's changing it up uh, for game number two and three as we get into the secondary and tertiary decks of this one. We gotta go to a quick break. When we come back, game number two of this series, our match of the day is getting underway. The cards see a heart that is tawny and a totem that's all kinda bony. This witch in such danger will soon be no stranger cause she's gonna be our new crony. We welcome you into this room, and we promise your enemy's doom. Just one more who's coming. The last one I summon is a fella who makes things go boom. <laughs> Islam. I go by Muzzy in game. My username, as you know, my first name is Mazahido. It's kind of difficult to say for some people, and every time someone calls you, you know, they're gonna have to say, "Hey, Mazahido." You know, that's that's long, and you don't want to say that. My friend gave me a nickname, you know, like, "Hey, Muzz, Hey, Muzzy." So I sort of just took that, and you know, my name's Muzzy. I took a look at the list of players. Some of them have been more focused on streaming, I would say, in these past few years. I've participated at the highest levels of competition that they might not have appeared in. I'm the player to beat in my group, for sure. The thing that I most look forward to about competing in Grandmasters is the thrill of competition. It's really why I play Hearthstone. It's what I've enjoyed doing for the past three, four years, and it's what I'll continue to enjoy doing, hopefully. I think Hearthstone Instinct is definitely my, my greatest skill set. I think that if I took a break for a while and didn't play the game and came back to new cards, I, I think I could pilot a new deck fairly well, fairly quickly. People would always mention the term burnout to me. Burnout, burnout, burnout. I, I didn't know what it was. I would constantly play Hearthstone all the time. I definitely want to have more titles and put my name in, in, Hearthstone, in Hearthstone history. 
Just got a glimpse of Muzzy, who will be kicking off Hearthstone Grandmasters for the Americas later on today. For now, we are in game number two of our match of the day, Tice versus Silvername. With Ty Tice up a game in that one, and on turn four, he played almost every single card in his hand. And then refilled it with a whole bunch of spells, most of which didn't even get played throughout the course of the game, like the Polymorph, which we thought would be a pretty pivotal card in the matchup, just wasn't really all that necessary. Security. Right, exactly, a backup plan, I guess. But speaking of cards that would be good in this coming match, Polymorph would be much better up against the secondary deck that Silvername is slotting in, because oh, yeah. we are seeing a switching out of Mecharu tracking two Direwolf Alphas and an Unleash the Hounds for the uh, the nine lives package, if you will, with two nine lives, Cairn Bloodhoof, and two mechanical whelps being thrown in, clearly thinking that a slightly more value-oriented game plan, or at least a tempo plan that is supplemented by a heavier top end, is the way to go against Mage. Big top decks at the end. That's the way that I view this mech deck. And for Tice, uh, some switch up of his own. He's taken out two Snap Freeze, Questing Adventure, and Stargazer Luna, and moved into his uh, deck, which was you know pre-built ahead of time with yeah. a Shooting Star, a Frostbolt, a Zeliax, and two Rabble Bouncers, in addition to what he had in game number one here. And my oh my, is he going to need those anti-aggro cards up against what Silvername has here? This curve is insane. It's bananas. <laughs> B-A-N-A-N-A-N-A-S. Bananas. Yeah, that's what I said. Didn't you say B-A-N-A-N-A-N-A-S? <laughs> yeah. Like Bananas. I, uh, we're saying the same thing. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot tell you how desperately I wanted to see a coin venomizer. <laughs> Not because it was good, but because it was cool. All right, buddy. I mean, you just go in here, right? Your curve is perfect. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, we can talk about how there's oftentimes different lines that can be taken with Mech Hunter. Last game, for example, I think was very interesting as to the lines he took. Uh, you were very much an advocate for an alternate line of play, especially in the mid game. In situations like this, you just get them. You just curve out, you hit him in the face, and hope that they don't freeze you up too much. The reason I want to coin Venomizer is to prevent things like this. Like in my in my head there, that is a suited up and go face situation. He would have gotten severely punished had he had he done that though. <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah, he would have done. This still gets pretty punished, but he has I think better backup plans this oh, way. Oh man, this works out so good for Tice. That one off shooting star that he teched oh, into his secondary deck. Look at this, he can just go ping, shooting star, I don't know, mirror image, evocation, and the mana cyclone. I guess he might want to save that for a more explosive turn, but it, it's looking pretty good. Mm. I'm pretty sure you do it. I think the bananas... It's, it's stuff on board, right? Yeah, it yeah. just gets things in. He has a sandbinder to supplement this. He gets to put extra cards in his hand. He has banana to keep fighting for board. You get an extra minion in play. Like, this is the ideal situation. Three cards is absolutely fine. And cross bolts and a cone of cold is absolutely gorgeous. I just Frodian reacted. My goodness. Ooh. Those are like ideal picks. Like, if you could just pick which cards you wanted, you're like, I think two frost bolts and a cone of cold. That's <laughs> really good. Uh, can I get a uh, cone of cold and two, uh, two frost bolts, please? You want guac? That's extra. Damn it. Bananas, though. Only a single mana. Mm. <laughs> Wait a second, I've got my crystals in here somewhere. <laughs> so how does Tice approach this? Because the weird thing with nine lives decks is if he just traded and then froze the 7-7, seven, seven, that then all of a sudden means nine lives summons oh. a 7-7. Seven, seven. I, I think Tice gets aggressive here. Yes, exactly. So that's what I'm saying. I like not dealing with this 2-2 two, two because it is unable to sacrifice itself off as it currently stands. So <laughs> look how much lives... it pains him to not play a banana. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but look how much it pains Tice to not play a banana with his exacerbated side. Like, <laughs> I might need a Frostbolt next turn, so I guess I save the banana so I can play an 8-8 and freeze a big thing, I guess. Like, this is great! I think you have a m far too much aggressive view of Tice as a human. Won. Did you see his reaction? Yeah. He was very upset about floating this mana. Fair enough. Or are you seeing what you want to see? I'm very upset. No, go back and watch the bot. He was, <laughs> he reacted greatly to it. 
And the weird thing for Silvername here is even with all these mechs, uh, these death rattle cards in play, Nine Lives last turn was not active because the uh, the replicating menace was magnetized on. It did not die itself. So until these minions are sacrificing themselves off, it's going to be a little bit slow here for Silvername, but he does still have some fantastic ways to this, approach the next few. If turns. this mountain giant lives, Silvername's in trouble. It does not, though. Oh, no, wait, if you trade the goblin bomb and then... That's exactly out. what I'm thinking. Okay. That's exactly what I was it thinking. It does survive. I take that back. Yeah. Beautiful recognition here from Ty. Oh, my. The goblin bomb... Oh! Okay. 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 Now we're talking. Next turn, silver name... Look at his eyes. He's like, ooh. <laughs> this is like the most glorious hearthstone Timmy play that you could make. It's a two-card combo that makes a big thing mm -hmm. that blows up all other minions, including your own. It's like baby's first death wing. Yeah, that's that's a good combination against this deck. Holy smokes. And Tice needs to be starting to worry about that because he knows there's a decent chance that either the Missile Launcher or the Venomizer was hit by the Galvanizer and therefore it will be playable on turn 7, not the usual turn 8. So he needs to be careful about how much he develops into that. Does he, for example, trade into the 2-2 uh, Mechanical Well in order to make sure that that dies to the poisonous effect of the Missile Launcher? Or is that giving his opponent too much immediate tempo? So there's two ways to look at it. Number one for Tice, how quickly can I close this game? Right. Number two, how much defense can I really play with what I have left? And honestly, from my perspective, I don't think you can play that much defense for too much longer. Mm -hmm. well, what do you mean by defense? Shutting down potential plays from Silver Name, constricting oh, his on? swings on the board right, and right. containing them afterwards. Yes, but I would say in Mage, the lines are very often blurred, right, where the, your best defensive plays are also your best aggressive plays. Yeah, I, I think here aggression is the key. Oh, as Tice here is opting to leave up the mechanical whelp. This does play around a, a nine lives that could come off of the top here, but he knows one is already gone, and now we can see Oh, wait, you can just magnetize it all onto the same mech rather yes. than get the 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah. That, that, that is the reason I think Tice did not kill the Mechanical Whelp here. Think about how large... Oh, yeah, of course, of course. The minion yeah, yeah, would yeah. be. No, that's way better. Yeah, yeah. Didn't even think about that. I always think about the, the Missile Launcher and the Venomizer coming together as one. This was definitely the way to go about so it. So now the thing about it is Silvername cannot develop his own minions. Right. But everything in his hand has magnetic. This minion's about to get out of control any way you slice it. So how does Tice freeze the board mm. and deliver lethal and not just die? It's hard to deliver lethal when you don't have any minions that can stick. So I would say the frost bolts that he has in hand are not going to be used to go face. They're going to be used to freeze minions while he tries to develop his own board. I guess, I mean, we can clearly see, even if he what does go for do? double Frostbolt ping to kill off the uh, the poisonous missile launcher aspect of this minion, so when he could just go for another one magnetized right on top in the next couple turns, Tice just cannot develop. And mind you, Tice removed Snap Freezes to add in defensive cards, but from what I'm seeing, maybe Snap Freeze is the card you need. Right. This play, however, from Tice, I, I love. Going for the second Frostbolt here to kill it off immediately would allow Silvername to develop other minions um, onto the board because the poison effect would not kill off his own minions. Now he can only magnetize them onto it, which is obviously very powerful. How does Tice but win? It gets frozen by another Frostbolt here. I mean, I'm not really seeing it oh. now. It's a victory for Tice now. The second Mana Cyclone. Okay. Could he go for it this turn? Uh, I don't think he can go for it this turn. He can set up for it. But he has yeah. to set up for it, but that's not a Mana Cyclone. That's a Mountain Giant. I don't think Tice can win. Unless he draws Mana Cyclone exactly, I don't think he can win this game. Maybe Magic Trick into uh, into Snap Breeze. Maybe. Ma Magnetic is messing with my head here. I feel like I, it, it's so difficult to play around everything because if he kills this off, it leaves a 7-7 seven seven on, on his opponent's side of the board. I mean, if he was even able to, it would leave a 7-7, seven, seven, and then he could magnetize stuff onto that and go for a huge amount of damage in one turn. 
But if he leaves it up, he literally cannot develop anything, and Silvername is just going to win. I mean, he could nine lives the 2-2 mechanical wealth here and it, get it back as a 7-7. Seven, seven. But it dies to the poisonous. Well, but the 2-2 the, the two, two part of it would die to the poisonous. Then the 7-7 seven, seven would be alive well, for you, a turn. You activate the death rattle. Oh, no, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't get the 2-2. Two, two. Sorry. You get the 2-2 two, two into hand. The, the poisonous... Uh, this mech deck is absolutely frying my brain. The, the poisonous... Uh, this is why I played a lot... Yeah, yeah, yeah. With this deck the other day when I was talking, you know, I was struggling with it against ladder. Yeah. Th this is literally why. Like, when I'm playing mage against this deck, if I cannot eliminate the, the missile launcher immediately, yeah. I, I, I have never beaten them. Which I guess maybe was a reason why Tice should have just bitten the bullet and gone for double frostbolt ping to kill it off when he could. It would have summoned, obviously, a 7 7 for his opponent. I but think then... he's more likely to win because of, you know, the chance that. Ah! Here we go. Ah! Here we go. But that summons six drops! I mean, what else can he physically do? He has to go Mountain Giant, Conjurer's Call, the opposing... Conjurer's Calling the Mechanical Whelp, and then Frost Nova. Right? Mm. <sighs> it will summon two six drops and a seven seven. I am not seeing much else. Because if he just goes giant Frost Nova, obviously it just dies to the poisonous effect. I think. Mm. I mean, I, oh, it does. I, well, no, no. I mean, does he have what? If you do not kill this minion, you cannot play a minion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it boils down to. I'm just wondering: is there any other avenue of victory, avenue to victory? Sorry, where he could just maybe freeze and Kundra's calling this turn, and the next turn go Cadgar Mountain Giant. I because he's afraid of this giant just dying to spider bomb fireworks tech. Yeah, he's going for it. Oh, oh no. <laughs> no way. What? I mean, obviously we can see there is another missile launcher in hand. But it's the principle. That's pretty thing. funny. That is pretty funny. <laughs> So honestly, I'm actually curious if Silvername protects the bigger one, because two missile launchers in play feels to me like maybe a way that you lose is you're actually just hitting yourself for two in the meantime as well. So you want to magnetize the missile launcher in hand and the venomizer in hand onto the dragon. It's kind of my instinct, yeah. Makes sense to me. Hmm. I'm thinking Ursatron's. That's what he went for before. Oh, boy. Well, you're not worried about two missile launchers pinging you now. It does not mean, of course, that he is unable to go for the play you were thinking of, missile launcher Venomizer on the 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, but he gets to load up two things anyway. Yes, yes Stick yes. Venomizer, stick Replicating Menace. It's still very much a powerful play. Yeah. As long as the giant dies, I'm fine. Is he not? Is he thinking about not killing the giant? I don't... I don't know Surely about you have to kill. The I guess giant. you could venomize your Ziliax. That's how you lose, right? Or I guess he could just do it next turn, even if he goes wide on board. Whoa! He's laying the giant attack. Whoa! Oh. If that hits Frostbolt, that's one damage off lethal. If, that's hit Cin if that hits Cinderstorm, it could be lethal. If you conjure's calling your own Cadgar, you only get two minions, correct? Mm. Yes. Okay. So it, what I'm thinking dies, is the Frostbolt from Magic Trick, Cadgar conjure's calling, you look for Bluegill Warrior or something. <laughs> Why not? Or, or spell damage in that yeah. instance. All right. Well, that plans out. Uh, do any of these... Do anything. Mirror NC does not trigger when your opponent magnetizes a minion into play. So that's unlikely to work. Ooh. Shooting star. I mean, none of these do anything. Yeah. There's one play here. Pray that there isn't a second Venomizer. In the event of second Venomizer, if you have enough taunts. Well, actually, if you trade, then it has to be exactly Missile Launcher plus Venomizer. Ah. Yeah. Your opponent's drawing a lot of cards, though. 
of Vex specifically, nonetheless. Wow, this whole board, oh. the whole board, the final gambit. The whole from board is going away. <laughs> and he loads up the bananas so the mana cyclone would even get weaker. And Silvername now, you know, his choice to not kill off all the minions on the previous turn is coming in big. He baited Tice to go for a big development here. I'm not even sure there's anything Tice could have done about it. No, no, no. Yeah, I think this from Silvername, it seemed risky at first. But if you look at what Tice's deck can actually do, there's very, very little that could have brought him back into this game. Like we said, there were super fringe outs for Leaf. It's just taunting him. He's like, hey, by the way, poisonous. Hey, by the way, poisonous. Hey, by the way, poisonous. Like, stop, dude. God, this, when uh, this happens to me on ladder, it upsets me a lot. That's game. Uh, yes. He doesn't die immediately with uh, rabble bouncers. Well, I mean, he does. Arena's full. Beat it. Because it could be, uh, oh no, one, one, three, eight. Oh no, that will kill it with the fireworks tech. It's yep. plus and plus one. Yep. Silver name. Pretty darn decisive game number two here, which means we are heading to game yes. number three. I the big package coming up big in this one. But it's got to be said that while the mechanical belts were obviously, they were obviously pretty important in Silvername locking out that victory, it really was just for Tice the inability to develop anything in the face of the continual turn after turn removal of Venomizer plus the Missile Launcher. The more I see that combo, the more I start to just think how absurdly powerful it is. I, it blows up everything else every turn it lives. Yeah. I think Tice has to go back to including Snap Freezes in the main. Really? Look what just happened. You cannot beat that if it if it lands against you. So do you think Tice expected Silvername to stick with his primary and that's why he switched over to his secondary? No, I don't think that. What I think is that do Tice he misread the situation. Has not encountered that situation in its, you know, inability to actually pressure Silvername, running into that and then just not having a way to deal with it. Like once you take yep. out the snap freezes, your only way to handle Missile Launcher and Venomizer on a big minion is literally to randomly generate a spell that handles it. That's true. But uh, if we look at that specific game, if Tice had not had specifically Shooting Star, he probably would have lost an awful lot quicker because he wouldn't have been able to kill off the Replicating Menace and stop the 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 perfect curve that Silvername had access to. I think he's more likely to stop it with Synergy stuff, though. It's an interesting thought and very wow. possibly true. I'm, I'm worried for Tice. That was a very decisive game number two for Silvername after he adds in the extra gas, which means we got to go to a break, and the decider of our match of the day is coming up afterwards. Don't miss it. It's game three of Tice versus Silvername. Now the cards show me a tinker. So clever, but kind of a stinker. In a storm that's a-raging, sits the last one I'm paging, a truly unusual thinker. All bots are now gonna go boom, but still, you shouldn't assume that I've made this selection on my own direction. No, indeed, let's be clear. I have brought you all here, and now you're all in. It is time to begin. I'm Facundo Pruso, more known as Nargivan. My username is an Illidan reference. I used to play Warcraft 3 a lot. Illidan is my favorite character. Back in the days, I really liked watching RDU stream as well, after I saw him for the first time on some DreamHack tournament. And then I got to beat him on some online tournament finals. That was my first tournament win, my first prize win. That was a very key moment for me in Hearthstone. I think I'm pretty good at recognizing what decks are good and how to improve them. I like the Su play style. Some people think it's like broke back deck, but then you have a lot of things to master, and there is a lot of little things in that deck that, of course, you can draw one, two, three, four and kill an opponent, but that's not gonna happen every game, and you know, you need to know how to improve your odds. I don't know if other players already respect me or not. In my region, I think they do. I'm not sure about the other Grandmasters. This year, I, I really want to qualify for Global Finals. I 
why I didn't make it last year. So that's the main goal. I hear a lot of players say first season didn't, wasn't that important, but I think it really is. If you win the first season, you made it to Global Finals. Nagidan going to be taking on Zalay uh, later on in the Americas region when we head over there for Grandmasters. He's the only player to bring Shaman to Grandmasters this week and started out 0-1 uh, with some poor luck, I think, in the matchup he faced, but looking to redeem that as he takes on Zalay later. For now, we're in game number three of Tice versus Silvername and a plot twist. Derok, Tice has swapped back over to the primary deck he has with Snap Freezes, including the main, which tells me one of two things. Number one, he didn't anticipate Silvername going over to the big version of the deck, or number two, he vastly underestimated Venomizer and Missile Launcher. I have two points as well. Number one, I have to concede you are an intelligent man. That's admirable. You predicted exactly that he would switch back over to his primary deck. And number two, I'm honestly not sure which conclusion he came to that he would want to switch over to his secondary deck. I think it makes sense. I would also have predicted that against a mech hunter, you would like cards such as Shooting Star, Frostbolt, Zilliax for the healing, and obviously the Rabble Bouncers as well. But I think he's coming to the conclusion, as you did, that the main thing he needs to be afraid of is Missile Launcher Venomizer. He just doesn't beat that. He had no way to check it. And so therefore, with his primary deck having double Snap Freeze teched in, which came out in the secondary deck, he's got some fight back against it. It's in the opening. It is in the opening hand. You now, are here's, not incorrect. Here's the thing. Silvername does not know what deck Tice goes into. In fact, Tice ah. doesn't know if Silvername stayed on the same deck. So True. until he sees a card that would have been substituted out, for instance, okay. the Stargazer Luna or, or the Questing, Questing Adventurer, Adventure. he does not have a way to know if Snap Freeze is in Tice's deck. Does that impact right. how he plays the matchup? I don't know. I think it's super interesting because... There's obviously benefit to not playing something like Stargazer Luna here, again, to conceal information. But imagine wow. not playing Stargazer Luna here. Yeah, imagine. Well, I could see Questing Adventurer. Questing Adventurer, Evocation, Cyclone. Because if you just go the Adventurer, you're weak to the Bomb Toss, unless that's been taken out. Yeah, it I, has not. I think Questing Adventurer needs to be coupled with something, yes. uh, specifically as a nod the to Bomb Toss. But I think if you're in my like situation, Stargazer Luna by itself is okay. Uh, and then number two, I think Stargate Luna with Mana Cyclone is okay. I think here for Tice, his thinking is, if I draw any of my cheap spells, I can get a payoff of Sorcerer's Apprentice. And then number two, I probably need to dig for more answers here. I think this is definitely the play I like the most, primarily because Luna is very difficult for this deck to answer straight away. Uh, and secondarily, I think he needs to be getting a little bit lucky in this matchup and needs to go for a big Mana Cyclone turn, which obviously just one spell generated is not good enough. I'm pretty surprised that Silvername didn't go for Explodinator here. I think he wants to save the coin for exactly Missile Launcher Venomizer. So eat the damage and then swing the board. He's very clearly setting out his game. Oh boy. It's not like he has to do nothing like until you. the big turn comes down. Well, he is in trouble now. Uh, the buck might have stopped. Uh, that Snap Freeze has to be too valuable to use, right? Like, it, you could consider snap freezing one of your minions here to keep the train going and Tice <laughs> is in an absolute dilemma. This is the reason he went back to his primary deck was to have exactly snap freeze hey, to deal with those minions. Luna didn't die last turn. How's it going to die this turn? Someday I'll be just like you. It's very unlikely to. It's like spider bomb coin firework tech for one out of three is it. Silvername's hand getting clunky as well. Whoa, this game's so close. I mean, Tice still on the aggressive here could just close out the game way before Silvername can fight back. And if Silvername coins out the fireworks tech here, what that means is that Missile Launcher and Venomizer is delayed until turn eight unless he draws exactly Galvanizer. Yes. I wonder what this does. Or sticks a, a Venomizer or a Missile Launcher in play. Ooh. Is that a good draw? It's difficult to use straight away. And man, that spider bomb, just sticking around with the death rattle able to go off again is super annoying. Hmm. Yeah, it is. Tizer instead, just going super wide on the board right out the gate. This is really interesting. This is very interesting. I mean, he gets so this a big mana cyclone, and he can freeze it as well. Ooh! 
Spirit of the Frog! Spirit of the Frog is insane! What? Oh what? my gosh! No! That's the no! No! This is insane! The game might just end! What? He can draw all his one mana spells from his deck. He can thin the deck! He doesn't have the time though! What is happening? That is absolutely mental. <laughs> what? Spirit happened? of the Frog in Mage. What? This is the strongest Mage turn I have ever seen. It's turn five, Derok. Turn five. So now for Tice, he needs to turn this advantage into a win right now before the missile launcher Venomizer plays. That's can come not down. even gonna be difficult. Dr. To look at his hand, the, the game is gonna end! Is still in play. This questing adventurer turn is beyond absurd. But does he even go for that? He just draws too many cards. Now you do whatever you want! How can he lose? Look at how much damage <laughs> is gonna come in! Oh man. Sure, mountain giant, sea giant. Pound on the pressure. He's making sure the mana works out to play Mountain what Giant, to trade, do. and play Sea Giant. To do. Man, who else but Tice if could double, get a game if like this? If double Galvanizer hit, Silvernade would only have three mana left, so he couldn't even stick Missile Launcher Venomizer in that instance. He could not. I, I, this is checkmate, I believe. It has to be... It runs out on me. It has to be nine lives, Galvanize hit perfect, next turn. and then activate, hit perfect. Yeah. Mm, yeah, okay. Oh, by the way, Tice has seven minions in play. So imagine hitting perfect. <laughs> that turn was so disgusting. Oh my lord. Yes, play all your cards, do all the damage. <laughs> That's not fair! That was unbelievable. Yeah. Yes, that yeah. is the only reaction that you can give. Wow! <laughs> that, that is the most insane mage turn I have ever seen. Bar none, no question about it. How on earth can you get a weirder, stronger turn than that? The thing is, if he'd had enough time, he could have kept going. That was only 1% of his power that he was using there. You're not supposed to be able to do that. Come on, let's get Tice on the line. I want to ask how he can do this yes, as please. quick as we possibly that's can. That's a shaman card. That's <laughs> why it's a shaman card. This is why we do not have dual class except for the once every, you know, whatever the Halloween thing is that happens. That's insane. Tice, can, can you hear us, Tice? Yeah, I hear you, man. Perfectly. What the heck happened in game three? Have you ever seen anything like that? Uh, no, but I liked it. <laughs> Elaborate. <laughs> well, I mean, Miracle Mage has some very fun shenanigans, but also with uh, when you have the questing adventure version. So I definitely was like hoping to get something up that it will turn out that great. Well, I take it granted. I don't think there was a better outcome. <laughs> <laughs> that was just nuts. Uh, talk to me about game two and game number three. You swapped over to the anti-aggro package, and then you moved back uh, to your initial deck. Walk me through the thought process. Well, I was kind of surprised that Silvername went for the Whelp version. I felt that his tertiary deck was actually quite good against me with the ammo ground, so I wanted more anti-aggro stuff. But when I saw he went for the yeah for the way more greedy version, I was like, yeah. I just I don't want to kill my I don't want to have my bouncers and so on. I just want to have my snap freezes and questing and just play it like a miracle mage. So I want to know, with you being uh, the biggest streamer here in Grandmasters, how you balance keeping secret techs to outplay your opponents whilst also having such a popular stream? What's the uh, the balance between trying to prepare for Grandmasters and also keep up your stream? Um, well, I think there are some things in common, like I just play a lot of Hearthstone, so there is already some basic knowledge on every meta that um, that helps me, but 
Also, besides that, I still try to practice during the evenings and here and there, especially with my teammate RDU, to still prepare for every week, uh, also for my opponents. And yeah, it's uh, hard to combine. You cannot do two things at 100%, but I feel that I'm balancing the two things very, very well in my, or that works for me. And uh, yeah, and streaming just also makes me happy. Comp competing makes me also very happy. So I just try to combine it, but I feel I'm doing quite well. And so, and so now with uh, your your performance here in uh, in Hearthstone Grandmasters, do you feel like this has lived up to exactly uh, you know what you're expecting from this? Like you have a three and one score now, uh, it's pretty darn solid. Do you think that you you're going to be pushing like just as hard? Do you feel like you have that perfect balance? Like uh, when does that crunch time come in if you, if you have to like you know put the pedal to the metal on practice? Well, I'm definitely also in a spot where I'm like, yeah, if there, if I both get really far or if I both let's say qualify for a next uh, further tournament i'm also very willing to then just sacrifice a little less streaming and the next time when i don't have anything going on then i stream a little bit more so i hope uh, that i can qualify i do i i'm just very happy with the system we have now it's very perfect for me that i have the opportunity to and compete and stream and uh, but i still think i'm a, i have a very competitive mind a very competitive mindset as well and i'm very happy i can show that in the grandmasters well, I'm happy you can show it off, too. I think you've been one of the gr the best players that's been out there for a long time, and you've proved it time and again uh, with mm -hmm. your tournament performance. Tice, congratulations on your win here. and looking forward to seeing you play next week. Thank you so much. I, 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 I still I, I feel bad asking a second question after talking about that turn, where I'm like, what do I say now? I just want him to describe how it felt to roll the spirit of the frog there. Just ASMR for us. What, for what's the bit. texture like? Describe the taste. <laughs> Delicious. Mm. That's the way to put it. Tice defeats Silvername in a crazy game number three by a score of two to one, which means our third match is in the book. We have three more. That's coming up, though. Just at the halfway point, Kalento versus Bunny Hopper is coming up next. Don't go anywhere. Stick around. It's Hearthstone Grandmasters for Europe. <laughs>